What's happening, y'all? It's been a while since you've heard from us. Indeed it has. About a month. Yeah. School just hits you sometimes. Man, when it's your senior year for your bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. you just stay busy, man. That's yep. just how it is. But we still found the time to put a video out for you all, at least for this month. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the best baits for October. Sounds, uh, it's a bit repetitive now, but hey man, it's gotta be said. Back to back best baits videos. Well, you know what? In my opinion, those are the best videos. Yeah, it, it's the most information in a condensed package for the most people. Yeah, it, uh, you know, it just sets you up for the whole month. Yep. You know what you need to throw because we tell you. <laughs> but again, you know, it's all subject to opinion. Yep. But with that, let's just get right into it. Y'all been waiting long enough. First up, we're going shallow to mid diving cranks. Yep. Because along, well, I should re-say that. Because October is much like September. Bass are feeding up. Yep, they sure are. They're trying to eat up on all that shad, all that bait fish. If you got bluegill, they're feeding up on the bluegill. They're hungry. Yep. They had a long, hard summer. They're making that fall transit. Well, kind of, we're already in the fall by now. Some people up north may still be in that transition period. But for most people, us and down, probably already in that fall stage. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, I might say, people down south probably ain't catching a whole bunch right now. Is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're catching them off Main Street. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that shark swimming down the road? Yes. That was funny. Uh, but anyway, you're trying to imitate them bait fish. Indeed. So you're wanting to kind of go with shad patterns. This is a nice, sexy shad type deal. Uh, great color if you're trying to imitate shad. Uh, if you're throwing for blue, a color scheme I like in the fall is like a, a dark, solid green back with an orange belly. Mm -hmm. That just gets them. I know Trey, he likes some of that chartreuse action. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, darker crawl patterns. Obviously, you know, you could throw red. I mean, <laughs> this red crawl, but like, personally, I prefer like a brown crawl with some chartreuse on it, yeah. either on the belly or right at where the back hook hanger is. Right. That this, is my go-to. This is more of a, just a, a crankbait that we like here, this major crab. Yep. It's a great one. I can't remember the exact name of it. The ZHC55. ZHC55. Major Craft, good, technically JDM company. Yep. Like them. Solid uh, depth, three and a half, six and a half. Mm -hmm. right uh, but this uh, Bagley here, I'm like big it. Fan. Yeah, big, big fan of also. Absolutely. So shallow to mid diving cranks, them bass are up more shallow. This ain't the summer, they ain't no. deep. Nope. So you don't have to search that deep. Shallower. To mid diving cranks, depending on where your bass are right now, hammers them yep. when they're feeding on bait fish. Number two is still going to fall along that line. That would be the spinner bait. Yep. Uh, for example, this is the KVD Stealth Blades from Strike King. Mm -hmm. Good spinner bait. I've had it for a while. Uh, works well. But this is a nice shad pattern, uh, kind of a gizzard shad type of deal. Got your speckles on your back, your white up here. A little bit of uh, what would you say, gill, blood or something, you know, mm -hmm. just a little red for some flair. Uh, but it's a great spinner bait. Throw you a, a swim bait on the back yeah. or a trailer hook. If you don't prefer plastics, mm -hmm. you can nail them if they're searching for shad. It's the same thing with them crakes. This is going to keep you up a little shower, shower in mid-range, and imitate them bait fish. Yep. And likewise, this is Z-Man spinner bait. The name eludes me yeah but uh this is a bluegill pattern okay so it's got that it's got a little bit of purple and it's got more greens mm -hmm. it's got some more black on it mm -hmm. so and then it's got a double willow blades yeah if you're up north also imitate perch yeah yeah uh very good perch and perch colors work really well around yeah, here considering do. we don't have a lot of them yeah it's just yellow perch and bluegill kind of color scheme goes very well hand in hand I uh, like that uh, stri striking their chartreuse perch color. Mm -hmm. Great uh, bluegill or perch kind of imitator. Really gets them. Same with Lucky Craft, their perch. Yes, yes, Very absolutely. Good. 
But we're not talking about Lucky Craft hard baits here. We're talking about spinner baits, okay? And just like Logan said, you know, this allows you to work it similarly to a crankbait. You're able to mm -hmm. move this in shallow water and uh, just be able to pick up bites and have a little bit more flash than what you might typically have out of a crankbait. Absolutely. Uh, and of course, the muddier water, you might be switching to Colorado's. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, if you got cleared or lightly stained or even stained, you can probably get away with a double willow or a willow with a Colorado little dude. I will say, in our experience, or at least mine, I may not speak for Logan here, but bronze blades work really well in tannic. Absolutely. They absolutely do. Uh, I know a lot of Florida guys will tell you that too. Yep. I guess that brings us to number three. Yeah. There ain't much out there that produces consistent clean like a jerk bait. Yeah. We've said that time and time again on this channel, and it's true. Mm hmm. Uh, there's just something about a jerk bait, something about that action and how you're working it, they just can't resist. It triggers that bass's strike instinct. He just wants to feed. Mm hmm. Very much so. And uh, in terms of retrieve, you know, it's cooling off a little bit, but it's not full blown winter, so you can still work these relatively oh, yeah. quickly. Oh, yeah. Especially whenever they're nice, uh, ready to feed up and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, you can work these pretty quick, yeah. actually. Uh, to great effect. Yeah, if you're uh, seeing a lot of activity, you know, give them what they want. Oh, yeah. Uh, what jerk bait is that? This is that Six Sense Provoke 106X. Great jerk bait. It is. And it's, it's a sexy jerk bait, mm -hmm. too. I mean, that's a good, all their baits are good looking. Yeah. And then I have a Rapala Ripstop 12. Mm -hmm. An old faithful, very, uh, very classic. A lot of people just, this is a, a go to for a lot of people. Yeah. And if you take a look at both of those side by side, one is very classic looking mm -hmm. and one is very modern looking yeah and it's going to show you they both are strong fish catchers oh yeah. we've caught many a fish on both of these but it can look good and catch fish too mm -hmm. but sometimes there seems to be a trade-off in catching fish versus fishermen but i think six cents does not exemplify that they consistently make things look good that are pleasing to the person's eye as well as the fish. Yep. I suppose in this category you could sub out, uh, you know, a jerk bait for like a twitch bait. Yeah, absolutely. I've had a lot of experience with the six cents hyper jerk, and uh, those work very well. Very good bait right there. So mm -hmm. if you if that's more your style, feel free to use that. You know, absolutely. It's a difference in action. People might be throwing a lot of jerk baits in your area, especially if you fish public. So throwing something like a twitch bait may give you a bit more mm -hmm. wider of an action. Yeah. Yeah. And you know. If you let it fall a little bit, a lot of times the bass will strike on the fall. Correct. Twitch bait's real good for that. Mm -hmm. Still, again, stick to your shad imitating colors like that, mm -hmm. or your uh, bluegill. Uh, that's also kind of a shad pattern. Yeah, I, but it's got a bit more of that green back to it. It's got, I have some bluegill colored jerk baits. I just didn't get one out to film. Yes. Yeah. Also, don't be afraid. To, uh, be, be afraid. Don't be afraid to try some saltwater baits too. Absolutely. There's some tons of saltwater uh, jerk baits out there that look really good for freshwater too. And really, the only difference for the most part is galvanized hardware, which is it's it works. Yeah. Trust me, we've had some we've had some luck on some saltwater baits. Some galvanized hooks just as sharp as carbon steel or mm -hmm. surgical steel. Get out there, throw a jerk bait. You don't see a show of and baits very often on the channel, no. but we kind of will for this next one, just because we've never had a problem with the jigs. That is the Guggen Scott Juicy Jig. Yep, 3 8 ounce and rotten uh, pumpkin. Pumpkin, I about said tomato. <laughs> I about said rotten, rotten tomato. tomato. <laughs> uh, this is not a critic score thing for popular movies and TV shows. Nope. Uh, anyway, jigs is the next one, yep. and we love throwing a jig. I don't think there's much more exciting. Oh um, no! Jig. Throwing something heavy, setting a hook hard, pulling out big fish. Mm -hmm. And for uh, viewers who have been with us for a very long time, you know how much we love jigs. Yeah. We love getting out there, throwing around wood and covered structure, and man, just jacking some jowl wrong. We both have some relatively expensive hard baits and stuff, but I guarantee you all, I'm not joking, most of our money has been spent in lures. I, er, in lures. <laughs> in lures. <laughs> I promise you most of our money has been spent in lures. But especially <laughs> jigs, man. Especially. We go through jigs like underwear, bro. And, and, and you know, 
And that's saying something because jigs are normally some of the less expensive baits you can buy. You yeah. can pick up jigs all day. Good jigs for two, less than a bag two, of soft plastics. Yeah, two bucks, three bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we have a good time going to like Walmart and picking up them little Strike King jig pack things that come with like two, two. rage crawls or mm -hmm. menaces. Then things are good. Oh yeah, man. Go out, buy about 10 of them. Absolutely. That's something that you can go and buy a ton of them mm -hmm. and just have a whole day, I mean, heck, a whole day, a whole year's worth of fun on nothing but what you went and bought for 20 bucks. Yeah. And even then, they have a bunch of different sizes, you know, so whatever gear you have, you'll be able to find weights that'll be perfectly fine with your current setup. Absolutely. I feel like they choose their most four or five popular colors, your black and blue. Hey, I got one in my hand right here. Yeah. Uh, your black and blues, your green pumpkins, your Texas crawl, mm -hmm. stuff like that. They pick out the best sellers and then the best selling weights, three eighths and half ounce. Yep. But you can also get like the bitsy bugs in like a quarter mm -hmm. and uh, three sixteenths, stuff like that. Yeah. So there's a plethora of jigs there for you all to get. Mm -hmm. And they are good quality jigs that come with multiple trailers. So if you lose one, you have a spare. Absolutely. Pro tip, go to Walmart to get your jigs. Yep. If you're in Strike King Jigs. Moreover, there are just a bunch of jigs on the market that we have experience with that are really good. Original Arkies, obviously mm -hmm. Strike King, uh, Six Cents Jigs, some Guggen Jigs, Juicy Jig, and the mm -hmm. the, uh, the Grass Hero Swim oh, Jig. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so there are a bunch of jigs on the market. Most of them are really good, and a lot of them are really good priced. Absolutely. And that's the thing about a jig is it, again, in this fall time, when those fish are up shallower and feeding heavy, that's the perfect time to throw a jig. Oh yeah, you're out there, you're throwing it up, round stuff. You can open water fish to dig, don't be fooled. No. Especially swim jigs, Oh yeah. if you're trying to imitate a bait fish. Yep. Throw, so, throw a three and a half inch kite tech or a rage swimmer on it, mm -hmm. or have a field day. It's a good old time. It is, it really is. Uh, fall time? They're feeding up. Mm -hmm. You want to catch them. Yep. But if you're having a hard time, that's where our number five comes into play. A finesse worm of some sort. This is our house-made yep. worms. Uh, we do make our own soft plastics a lot of times, but this is from our company for the seventh cast, the wild worm. But a finesse worm, uh, I like a six, seven inch. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll go wait. Uh, this time of year, but it, it's so versatile. Oh, yeah. You got shaky heads, you got T rigs, drop shot, drop shot, Tokyo rig, all kinds of different finesse techniques, even to power techniques that you can do with a finesse worm mm -hmm. if you're having a hard time getting bit. A finesse worm is one of the oldest baits in bass fishing, as far as soft plastics go. Yeah, and that's for good reason. They're very simple. Mm -hmm but they usually have really good action and they're very enticing to a hungry bass. Yep. And also, hungry. for all you spinning gear freaks, this is one of the really capable spinning gear techniques oh, yeah. on this list. Absolutely. Not saying, you know, twitch baits, jerk baits, and cranks and stuff can't be thrown on spinning gear, but this is a Absolutely. very, very good spinning gear technique. Actually, I'd say probably just about all my first catches for any of those baits were probably on spinning gear. True. We've moved mostly over to straight casting gear. Oh, we have, but we still have places in our hearts for spinning gear, and it's something that we still commonly use. Oh yeah, especially I for mean, netting and stuff like absolutely. that. Absolutely. 90% of the time we're trying to throw cast, we just love it so much. But 10% of the time, spinning gear is just what gets it done. Yep. Especially smallmouth fish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that's one thing we haven't even brought up about smallmouth. You know, in this time period, you know, smallmouth are also on the move and feeding up. And all of these are very capable techniques for smallmouth. Absolutely. Now, you may want to size down your jerk baits from, you know, uh, a 110 size yeah. to, to like an 80 or a 90. Mm -hmm. You know, you may want to size down, you know, this simply for the fact that it's a smallmouth. Yeah. You know, especially like uh, river smallmouth gas, stream smallmouth gas. That's gonna be more of the case. Uh, you guys up north, if you're seeing, yeah, it, it really all depends on the size of your smallmouth. Yeah. Um, 
you can definitely catch you can catch a small smallmouth on a seven inch worm but i just feel like when it comes to smallmouth four to five inch worm is just the sweet spot yeah coincidentally that's your biggest size or your most popular sizes for sankos absolutely which is just a killer of fish absolutely general. not on this list though yeah it's an honorable mention but it's always an honorable mention because you can always catch fish on a sanko yep um, multiple companies, you know, this is one of the oldest soft plastic designs ever. Every company has a variation on it. Find one that works for you in your favorite color and fish it because you will catch a fish. Yeah, this is going to be for when you're having a hard time getting a bite in the fall and you just need to catch a fish, pick up that finesse worm. Now, we do have our partial baits, specifically the Divine Shaking Worm is a very good finesse worm. Absolutely. From Sixth Sense, but you know, uh, Striking has them, obviously Zoom. Z-Man just came out with that shaking my head worm. Yep. SMH, whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh, I'm hip. Yeah, Brian Latimer, if he's throwing that finesse worm, why wouldn't you throw that finesse worm? To bring it all back around to colors, there are a couple colors that I'm mm -hmm. very partial to within this time of year, specifically for soft plastics. Oh, uh, what would those be? That would be Morning Dawn. Oh, that's good. Tequila Sunrise. Oh yeah, sometimes you just gotta go upside that head. Yes sir, okay. Those colors have always worked very well for me in this time of year, mm -hmm. especially whenever I'm fishing tannic water. Absolutely. And you know, in Kentucky, you don't have a ton of tannic water, but you do have some. Especially a lot water. of ponds. Yeah. A uh, lot of ponds that have uh, pine trees pine around trees, it. Pine trees, cedar trees, you know, your fir kind of tree, evergreens. Mm -hmm. uh, your non-deciduous trees. Yeah, especially with the pines because those needles uh, are pretty acidic. And when they fall down that water, those tannins from those pine needles first out of, I'm getting into a whole lesson. We have a whole video on this, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. If we don't now, we need to make one about tannic water. Yep. But that wraps up this video, man. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid, okay? Mm. A lot of the baits that worked last month are going to work for this month. Absolutely. A lot of the baits that work this month are going to work for next month. Absolutely. It is that perfect time of the year where all of the popular baits that everybody likes to throw are the ones that are biting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the fall's a good time, kind of like post-spawn, to do a little experimentation. Yep. If you got a bait that you're wanting to throw and it kind of imitates bait fish, go for it. You will catch some fish, I guarantee it. 100%. Well, I'm not going to guarantee that. I just might. You do you. <laughs> With that, we'll wrap it up. Yes, sir. Uh, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all that junk. We hope you enjoyed this video. Yep. Make sure you comment down below, of course, your favorite bait for fall, mm -hmm. along with your favorite color, your favorite fishing hole, uh, exact coordinates. Uh, I'm going to need all that. I'm going to be there. Um, but with that, thank y'all. See y'all in the next one.